What does it mean when you put the word race in the name of a trail bike? According to YT, it means it's got 10 millimeters more travel and some more advanced suspension. But does that make it a race bike? We brought the newly updated Jeff C29 Pro Race into the bike shop to find out exactly what this bike is supposed to be. This Jeff C Pro Race is kind of a step farther past the, the trail category that we're mm -hmm. used to seeing. Yeah, and it really does bridge that gap between the Jeff C and the Capra. But still, it's, it's, its core DNA is in the trail bike category. Totally, and we noticed that this was a bike that pedaled well. And when you take a look at the geometry, we get 77 degree seat tube angle, and that's in the lower setting, which both you and I found was a great setting for this bike. Mm -hmm. With a 77 degree seat tube angle, it's a 66 degree head tube angle. And it climbed great. I found that I liked it on any sort of dirt that was remotely technical. I liked it open more because mm -hmm. it gave it a lot better traction, sort of tractoring up obstacles and stuff. And the linkage that's on this bike, it's a, essentially a horse link kind of a setup. And it's not that nuanced or advanced. I mean, it's not a dual link bike. I mean, it's, it's rather pedestrian, but I think in a good way. I would say it airs on the supportive side. I noticed that too. There was good mid-stroke support. And when we say it's a horse link bike, that's a style of suspension that we've seen for a long time and it's gotten better, better, better mm -hmm. over time. And it climbs well, but this doesn't quite have that hover bike effect. It has what we'd expect when mm -hmm. we're pedaling a full suspension bike that pedals well, but isn't this next level super bike. And there's plenty of riders and also I'll even have plenty of days that I really just want to get the power out of the bike that I put into it. And, and I'm not necessarily worried about it tracking over every single bump. Like I just want to, to mash. And I think this bike is really good at that. And that's in the wide open setting. So if you're, if you do have a lot of technical climbs, like you're not gonna feel like you need to find that middle setting and the rear shock. I mean, you can leave it wide open. It's still plenty firm, but if you do want to lock it out, which I have a lot of fire road climbs and it's a pretty firm lockout on this rear shock. It's super firm. To me, it felt totally locked out. And I agree with you. When it's still in the open setting, it's a crisp, sprightly mm -hmm. feel to it. Um, so it definitely leans a little bit toward that trail bike heritage. But when you start descending, you do have that 36 factory grip to 150 millimeter fork that can take a lot and uh, definitely has some prowess descending as well. And that's where this bridging the gap characteristic gets a little bit complicated, where they take this bike that has trail bike aspects. I mean, it rides relatively light. The, the, the leverage curve on the rear isn't necessarily that meant to be bashed all the time kind of feel. Like the Capra ramps up and it ramps up pretty perfectly for a, a big hit kind of a bike. This one, uh, you have to play with it a little bit if you want to ride it in that same way you would a capper like if you want it to be your 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 capper in your back pocket um the nice thing is uh the out of the box this has got the 0.4 cubic inch volume spacer in the rear shock so if you really really want to thrash it you've got a bunch of steps to make it more progressive if you want and i think you mentioned the 0.4 volume spacer is the the second smallest mm -hmm. correct so yeah. you have a lot of room to ramp up the feel of the rear suspension if you want, if you want to mm -hmm. get it more towards that sort of basher mm -hmm. type feel. But it's very interesting because this is a bike that takes the cues of modern geometry that we've seen become more and more popular on mm -hmm. enduro bikes and it applies them more to that trail all mountain category. Mm -hmm. We rode an XL, it had a 490 reach. We also noticed that it had a little bit longer chainstay on the XL, I believe it was a 440. Yeah. I found it created a very balanced feel to body positioning. Yeah, I agree. Like it was one of the fastest quote unquote trail bikes that I've ridden in a long time. Like I felt really comfortable at speed on this. Didn't really feel like playing around with it all that much though. But at the same time, it wasn't this um, overly soft glued sensation. It was just, it had a little bit of a crisp feel to it. I think crisp is the right word like that's what sort of further separates it from the capra like like it's not a ground huggy for the first half and basher for the second half like it's a little more consistent throughout the travel far from being a more thuggish version of the jeff c the pro race is actually just more floaty 
That means it gets a little vague at trail speeds, but it gets pretty focused at ludicrous speeds. The stable geometry and supple tunable suspension earns it that race name, but it comes at nearly no cost in the climbs. Other than my initial setup ride, I didn't do a single ride on this bike under 30 miles. Like it, it, it's, it's so rad. And this is, this is something I, to talk about steep seat angles again. This is something cool that that is introducing is you can make a bike like this that is longer and slacker than the, than the original one, put it in the slack mode and it still puts you in a really efficient pedaling position. If you have terrain that demands a Capra um, and you want to be out there all day, it's a bit of a struggle. Like this You're one. battling a very big bike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we see that it's got some lighter parts on it as well. These are um, E13's carbon wheels. And it also, we saw that YT went with the Guide RSC brakes. Mm. When we see Guide R's, we cringe a little bit, but these Guide RSC's, I thought, you know, they were decent. That does lean itself more on the trail end of the spectrum, but I thought it was a decent spec for yeah. these brakes. Yeah, it doesn't mean I wouldn't have wanted to have codes on this, but yeah, I wasn't, did, did not ruin my ride in any way. Totally, and this was along those lines also, this was an XL frame and it had a uh, Fox transfer factory, but it was a 150 drop. And Fox has a 170, we're gonna be seeing 170 droppers on them, but it's just it just takes a while for that to get to the end user. So that was one minor complaint that I had on the spec. Uh, these E13 wheels, we both felt are, are not the, the most modern, supple, nuanced feeling carbon rims. They do feel a little bit harsher mm -hmm. and a little bit more deflection than some of the newer carbon options out there. And you felt the tires didn't help? These E13 tires felt a little bit harsh for the casing. Now, you and I both rode some very technical terrain. We didn't get any flats with these tires. So True. that was great. And. I I think to pull back a little bit from that, the things like wheel feel and tire feel, I almost put in the same category as us uh, talking about the the lack of nuance in a horse length suspension. Like if 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 somebody yeah. hearing that sounds like we're just a couple of snobby professional bike reviewers, like by they will not be bums. Like it's really totally. just like like real They're nerdy. They're fine tires. We're yeah. just looking for the, the the we're the princess and the pea kind of. Totally. So, yep. so YT did something that I have been wanting brands to do for years is if you design a bike that doesn't fit a traditional bottle, you, you find a way to get something on there. And in practice, it falls a little short. When you go to put it back, you'd think it's magnetic. It's going to find its way to its home. The concepts designed by Fidlock, they do the, um, the, the kind of more advanced helmet clips, which are nice and easy yeah. and secure. But this was, it had to go hunting to find mm -hmm. its home. But I would rather have this than have it under the down tube. Totally, or, you know, so you like, get a bunch of cow manure on yeah, your bottom. Yeah, no, yeah. so the, the, they, it's a step in the right direction. So I guess this is what it's come to in 2019. The banger comment that ends this review is about a water bottle but it's emblematic of what the Jeff 29 Pro race is so good for. It rides light enough to merit ditching your pack in the interest of crushing more laps. And it's capable enough that you'll want to ride unencumbered like you might in a bike park or a set of jumps or, yeah, even in a race.